Today's lesson will be on the age of exploration, that period of time uh, starting with the commercial revolution of the 1200s, which uh, began Europe, Europeans' attempts to find new ways to trade uh, with what they referred to as the Indies, what today we would refer to as Asia, uh, including China, Japan, and India. Big idea for this lesson is trade routes developed across the globe, European explorers across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas. Main ideas, economic growth in Europe led to new ways of thinking. Trade with Africa and Asia led to a growing interest in exploration. Many European nations rushed to explore the Americas. The Colombian exchange affected the Americas, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Main idea one, economic growth in Europe led to new ways of thinking. Europe experienced a great economic change called the commercial revolution beginning in the 1200s. <clears throat> Wealth became more important in European society, which was just then coming out of the period that we know of as the Middle Ages. Merchant families wanted capital, that is money or property that is used to earn more money. Merchants created what were called joint stock companies. These were businesses in which a group of people would invest together. Rather than one person having to shoulder all of the burden of investing in a business opportunity, a large group of people would invest a small amount of money in a business opportunity. Therefore, if the business succeeded, everybody would benefit. Uh, but if the business failed, then everybody would only lose a little bit. Uh, now, this commercial revolution led to increased trade, and the increase in trade led to three major things happening. First, more workers were needed as a result of more money being made. And people who had been tied to the land, serfs, uh, began to move into towns and they became workers who were paid for their labor. Uh, prior to this time, serfs had been tied to the land and they owed their, their loyalty uh, to a lord or other vassal who, who was above them in the hierarchy of the social structure. But now they have a freedom to, to move about and sell their labor for money. This, this largely came about uh, in no small measure uh, due to the advent of the bubonic plague uh, in, the, uh, in the 14th century, the, uh, the Black Death, if you will. Uh, the Black Death uh, killed huge numbers of people, but it changed the social order and it made it possible for serfs uh, to become socially mobile. And so they did. They moved into towns, began selling their labor for money. Uh, this increased trade also led uh, to more cash in circulation, which led to the development of banking and led to lending services becoming available. You could borrow money for business opportunities. This availability of uh, more money led to the building of businesses. People were willing to attempt to uh, create new businesses because money was available to make it possible. Now, because more money is in circulation and because of the increase of trade, merchants become richer. They become wealthier. Their power begins to expand. They have greater influence. Uh, and because merchants are getting wealthier, they're being taxed by whatever royal house they, uh, they owe their loyalty to. These tax increases increase the king's power and wealth and make uh, countries stronger. Focus question number one. Explain how economic growth in Europe led to new ways of thinking. Main idea two. Trade with Africa and Asia led to a growing interest in exploration. Wealth was made mainly through trade with distant continents, such as Asia and Africa. European merchants looked for sea routes to Africa and Asia by 1400. New technology was aided, or developed rather, to aid in this exploration. Developments such as the magnetic compass, uh, a device called the astrolabe, more accurate maps, 
uh, another device called the Sextant, and a kind of trade ship called the Caravelle. Vasco da Gama, using these uh, innovations in technology, sailed all the way down the west coast of Africa, uh, rounded the, the tip of southern Africa, and then went out into the Indian Ocean and reached India by 1498. And here we have some examples of the technology that was developed to make all of this possible. Uh, here we have what's called the Hartman Astrolabe. Uh, this is a, a later version than what would have been used in the 1400s, obviously developed in 1532. The Astrolabe uh, allowed uh, navigators on merchant ships to establish their, uh, their position uh, on the ocean at night by observing the what's called the declination angle between the horizon and specific stars in the night sky that had been accurately mapped. And by being able to, uh, to accurately place these stars in the sky uh, at particular times of the night, they could get a rough estimation of exactly where they were. The Mariner's compass, a uh, magnetic compass, enabled them to safely be able to travel outside of the site of land, knowing what direction that they were going constantly. Compass would, would always keep them going on a particular course, whatever course heading they set for themselves. Uh, the sextant, uh, yet another navigational instrument, again made for observing stars in the night sky, and then of course uh, much better maps than it existed before. Uh, prior to this period of time, uh, sailors tried to stay with inside of land at all times. Going outside of the site of land was a was a terrifying experience for them. Uh, because without the devices that you see on this picture, they had no real way of knowing where they were. And so if you sailed outside of the sight of land, uh, especially in the open ocean, uh, there, there was a pretty good chance that you would never see land again. Uh, going outside of the sight of land for many sailors was a death sentence. In addition to these devices, we have a new type of ship. Here we have uh, an example of such, the Caravelle. There are actually two examples here, uh, one in the foreground, one in the back. Uh, the Caravelle had a number of, of unique innovations, uh, not the least of which was the type of sail that you see here. This is called a Latin sail, shaped like a Dorito. Uh, prior to this period of time, most European sailing vessels had square sails only, which you can see examples of here in the background. And the problem with a square sail was that it allowed you only to travel in the direction that the wind was blowing. The Latin sail gives you the ability to do what's called tacking into the wind. That is, you don't have to sail in necessarily the direction that the wind is going in. The Latin sail basically allows you to sail in whatever direction you need to go in. Uh, in addition to that, another development, which you can't really see here, but which would be on the... Uh, the aft portion or back portion of the ship. It's called the stern post rudder. Uh, earlier sailing vessels basically just used big oars in order to steer the ship. And what that meant was that the ships could only get to be so big before they, be they became unmaneuverable. You could not uh, maneuver them. With the de development of what, it, what was called the stern post rudder, a rudder that was attached to the ship where you, that would allow you to turn the ship in whatever direction you needed to go, it enabled uh, seamen to uh, sail in larger vessels for longer distances. And since they, the ships that they would be sailing uh, would be somewhat larger with bigger uh, cargo capacities, uh, it meant that uh, the idea of trade across long sea routes now becomes possible, all because of these technological developments. Focus question number two. Why would trade with Africa and Asia lead to a growing interest in exploration? Main idea three, many European nations rushed to explore the Americas. Christopher Columbus was a sailor from Genoa, Italy, who heard stories of great wealth in what was called the Indies. He persuaded King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain to pay for an expedition to the Indies, which was the catch-all name 
uh, for the countries of Asia. Uh, truthfully, the Europeans had no real idea, like at least no real accurate idea of exactly what Asia was, other than uh, stories that had been brought back by other explorers such as Marco Polo uh, from near from 200 years previously. But there there had been no sea seaborne expeditions to Asia, and nobody in Europe really knew what Asia was. But what Columbus knew is he wanted to go there to trade. He wanted to make money, and that's what that's what his voyages of discovery were all about. On August 3rd, 1492, Columbus set sail across the Atlantic uh, with three ships, the Niña, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. And on October 12, 1492, he reached the Americas uh, after a, a voyage that was uh, not necessarily fraught with peril as far as uh, nature goes, but... Uh, Columbus himself did face some issues uh, with the crews of his ships and also with the captains of the, of the other ships that went along. Um, he was kind of lucky to make landfall on October the 12th. He might not have survived much longer. The crews were uh, very nervous about sailing outside of the side of land. As previously mentioned, that was kind of a terrifying thing for them. So Columbus in the Americas. Columbus and his crew landed in the Bahamas on an island that he named San Salvador. He called the native people there Indians because he thought he was in the Indies. The problem with, with Columbus's voyage was that he, he severely under, underestimated the actual circumference of the earth. He believed the earth was much smaller than it was. Uh, now there were others at the, at the time, and bear in mind, Columbus was not trying to prove that the earth was round. If you were educated in Europe at the time, uh, it, it was well known that the earth was a globe. Uh, Columbus believed the, the earth was smaller than it was. And this caused some kind of some controversy. And there were people who advised King, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella not to fund his voyage because of it, because they, they believed uh, that his math was wrong and he was just going to sail off into the horizon and disappear into the great world ocean and never be heard from again. Uh, but the king and queen decided to take a chance, and, and Columbus stumbled upon something that nobody knew was there, which, uh, which would be the Americas. Of course, the people that lived here knew, uh, but the Europeans certainly did not. Columbus was interested in gold, not in the culture of Native American people. He was interested in wealth. And when on the island of San Salvador... Uh, he was given gifts by local natives, gifts of, of small trinkets of gold and tobacco and so forth. And uh, this piqued his interest. This is what he was really looking for. Um, the way that Columbus treated the native peoples and the way especially that the, the, uh, many of the crew members on the various ships treated native peoples was beyond shameful. It was, it was you know, truly a horrifying thing that, that many of them did. And I think in the modern terms, Christopher Columbus is, is rightly viewed uh, not so much as a hero, maybe a little bit more as a villain. Um, but you cannot deny the, uh, the enormity of what it was that he accomplished. He set off into the great unknown uh, to make a discovery, and he did. He made three more voyages to the Americas, mapping islands in the Caribbean Sea, uh, he mapped part of the north coast of South America, touched on South America here, uh, and he made it to the northeast coast of the Isthmus of Panama, uh, sailing up the coast of Central America, uh, discovered part of the Yucatan Peninsula before uh, sailing to Cuba and then back eventually to Europe. The impact of his voyages on the world, though, was not realized until years after he died in 1506. Uh, Columbus spent the remainder of his life believing that he had made it to Asia, um, which of course we know now he did not. Other explorations. The news that Christopher Columbus had discovered what was thought to be a western route to the East Indies spread through Europe like a wildfire. Other European countries began to send explorers. Like Columbus, they were looking for gold, silver, silk, spices, anything of value that, that could, be, could be purchased to take back to Europe 
uh, to sell. Again, these voyages of discovery, they weren't about discovery in the sense of exploring for the sake of knowledge. They were attempting to explore because they wanted to get rich. They were also looking for new land to claim for their country. They wanted to establish a presence in this new world, as they would eventually come to call it. They soon discovered that what Columbus had actually found was North America, that it was not the Indies at all. It took, it, it took a little while to figure that out, but they, they did eventually figure out that this was not Asia. Amerigo Vespucci. America was named for this explorer who, amongst many today, is little known, a man by the name of Amerigo Vespucci, who sailed to the Caribbean and South America in 1499 and 1501, and he made detailed charts of the coastline. He sailed all the way to, uh, when he followed part of uh, Columbus's uh, exploration to the Caribbean, and then sailed down the coast of what is today Brazil, and uh, made accurate maps. That would be his 1499 voyage. In 1501, he, he went back, uh, came across the Atlantic Ocean at its narrowest point, and then finished a voyage uh, down the coast of Brazil to uh, the northern part of what today would be the country of Argentina, and made an accurate chart of the entire coastline. Using the information that had been uh, gained from the voyages of Vasco da Gama, Amerigo Vespucci, Christopher Columbus, Ferdinand Magellan uh, headed an expedition consisting of five ships and 250 men sailing for Portugal uh, between 1519 and 1522. And this expedition would eventually make it all the way around the world. They would circumnavigate the globe. Uh, Magellan, however, would not finish the journey himself. Uh, only 18 sailors survived from Magellan's original crew of 250. September 1522, they sailed back to Spain on the ship Victoria. The Victoria and its crew were the first to sail around the world. Their journey around the world took about three years. Several countries sent explorers to North America to find a sea passage from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, and this passage that they were looking for came to be known as the Northwest Passage. Once it became obvious that the Americas were indeed enormous, the uh, European countries wanted to find a way around it. In the 1570s, uh, an English explorer by the name of Martin Frobisher uh, attempted to find a, a path around North America going north uh, and didn't find one. Sir Humphrey Gilbert attempted it in 1583 and John Davis in 1587 to 1591, and Henry Hudson in 1610, 1611. And we have a later exploration here, uh, 300 years later, from, in 1818, a man by the name of John Ross uh, actually made it the furthest. But what they all discovered was that the far north was completely frozen, and there was no effective way to get around America to the north. So the Northwest Passage really was kind of a, a myth. French explorers came to the Americas, uh, Jacques Cartier in 1534, uh, coming down the St. Lawrence River, uh, explored these areas that you see in red here, discovering Lake Champlain, uh, and uh, sailing part of the way to the Great Lakes, but not quite making it. Samuel de Champlain uh, reached what is now Canada in, in uh, 1605, and Champlain is the, uh, is the one there were that discovered part of the Great Lakes as well. So the French, their explorations give them claim to this area that we today call Canada. Uh, for them, once they began uh, setting up colonies there, they would name it New France. Henry Hudson, the English sea captain Henry Hudson, who was sailing for the Dutch, uh, led an expedition to present day New York in 1609. He discovered the Hudson River right here, which empties into uh, what is today uh, New York Harbor. And then in 1610, 1611, uh, he came again, sailing on another expedition for the Dutch, and he discovered what now is named Hudson's Bay. And his uh, crew mutinied against him 
during this journey of attempting to map Hudson's Bay. And uh, they set him and several loyal crew members and, and his young son adrift in a boat and sailed back to you, uh, sailed back to Europe. This painting uh, that we see here is John Collier's painting of Henry Hudson with his young son and some crew members after a mutiny on his icebound ship in June 1611. Uh, the boat that Hudson was on was set adrift and uh, he and the others that were on the boat with him were never seen or heard from again. Almost certainly died of exposure and how sad for this for this little boy. Focus question number three. What were the reasons for many European nations rushing to explore the Americas in the 1500s. Main idea four, the Columbian exchange affected the Americas, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Explorers brought plants, animals, and diseases to the new world of the Americas and brought back plants and animals to the Old World, or Europe, Asia, and Africa. The Columbian Exchange, or sometimes referred to as the Great Exchange, is the name given to this transfer of plants, animals, and diseases. Explorers brought with them horses, cattle, pigs, and grains such as barley and wheat to the Americas, and Europeans took back such American plants as corn, tomatoes, tobacco, cocoa, and the venerable potato. Uh, you can't, I can't uh, really do much of anything without a potato because I love potatoes. Diseases from Europe, such as smallpox and bubonic plague, killed tens of millions of American Indians. The total Native American population in North and South America before 1492 uh, is estimated by some to have been around 112 million. Uh, the real number, though, may have been higher. By 1650, the native population of all of North and South America is believed to have numbered only about 6 million. 95% of the population of the Americas died off. For Native Americans, first contact with European explorers was their apocalypse. For them, it was the end of their world in every real way imaginable. Uh, you know, we, we just got, uh, we're getting done now with the, with the COVID pandemic. And it, it inconvenienced us as, as, a, as a world, particularly in American society. It was an inconvenience. Uh, a million Americans died because of COVID, but compared to what happened to Native Americans uh, 500 years ago, what we've just experienced was nothing. For them, again, this was the end of their world. And here we have a uh, map depicting the uh, what is called the Great Exchange or the Columbian Exchange uh, from Europe, or excuse me, from the Americas to Europe, Africa, and Asia. Uh, we have all of these things here, foodstuffs, avocados, cassava, chili peppers, guava, pimentos, the pineapple, potatoes, pumpkins, squash, uh, flowers like black-eyed Susans, marigolds, uh, things that can be used for medicine like quinine, which is good for treating malaria, uh, rubber, which at that point was unknown in Europe, and then tobacco, which would become the uh, the great health scourge in Europe starting in the 15th century. And then, of course, the turkey. And coming from Europe to the Americas, foodstuffs that uh, some things which you may think are actually American in origin, which aren't, such as apples, bananas, citrus fruit, lettuce, olives, peaches. All of these come, watermelon, all of these things come uh, from Europe, Africa, and Asia to the Americas. Flowers like carnations and daffodils. Uh, the, the venerable crabgrass, which I can never get out of my lawn, sugar cane, and then farm animals like cattle, chickens, horses, pigs, and sheep, honeybees. Honeybees didn't exist in the Americas at all. Uh, uh, also black flies. So if you uh, see flies around, those were, <laughs> those are imports as well. And then the diseases, bubonic plague, diphtheria, malaria, measles, mumps, 
uh, the great killer, smallpox, typhus, yellow fever. Uh, for Native Americans, this exchange was, uh, there were good things about it for them, but the, the big thing for Native Americans were these diseases, and it was horrible. Again, 95% of the Native American population died as a result of coming into contact with Europeans. Focus question number four. How did the Colombian exchange affect the Americas, Africa, Asia, and Europe? The essential question for the age of exploration, as trade routes developed across the globe, why did European explorers cross the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas, and what were the effects of contact between Europe and the Americas? 